Man, this is the Mile High Huddle Podcast. I'm your host, Chad Jensen. With me, as always, my fellow football priest, who you know, who you love, Zach Kelberman. Zach, the Broncos, we'll go through a couple of the re-signings and whatnot, um, some of the latest rumors, but last time we were on the mic was, of course, Monday evening. A lot's changed. Lots happened since then. How are you feeling about the way things are shaking out uh, for the Broncos through this first week or so of free agency? It might be unpopular, but I high key love how the Broncos have attacked the offseason, their approach to it, the players they've signed, the players they haven't signed, the quarterbacks they haven't gone after. And also, Chad, how they divvied up the Russell Wilson release, which became official yesterday at the start of the new league year, post June 1st release, taking the bigger hit in 2024 and a smaller hit in 2025. I just really like the vision that Sean and George Payton have exhibited so far, and they can put the cherry on top, in my opinion, by bypassing all these other quarterbacks, rolling with Stidham until the draft, and then getting that guy and then going into the season. What do you suppose that means, that they chose the Broncos? They opted, and I'll break it down for everybody. So on the dead money, the Broncos opted, according to Schefter, to spread those hits thusly. Uh, uh, $53 million dead this year. 2024 followed by another 32 million dead in 2025 so they're they're in other words they're taking the they're taking it on the chin most i mean both years they're taking it on the chin yeah. um but they're they're gonna absorb the biggest brunt of it this year how do you interpret that i interpret it as George and Sean probably saying to themselves, listen, it's going to be a transitional year, probably with a rookie quarterback starting at some point, but they're looking at the long term, and that's what I appreciate, Chad. That's why I'm encouraged. It's really not about 24. It's about 25, 26, and beyond. So next offseason, this time next year, they're set up to have about $100 million in salary cap space and then mostly free from the Russell Wilson release. We got the Sam Bam jumping in with an early super. Much love and respect, big dog. Thank you so much. <clears throat> he says, evening. So it appears that it will be Stidham and a drafted QB as the plan for quarterback right now. Also, what are your thoughts on the Broncos taking a larger portion of the Wilson dead cap hit now, et cetera? Right. That's why producers doing this in the thing. He's like, check this out. Hold on. Save all that analysis for this super chat for Sam. Now it all makes sense. You know, we should probably get our hand signal stuff down pat, like the seals and stuff. Like, you know, when you watch, they're like, they know exactly what they're saying. This, this, we need to get that down. But um, we were kind of into this, Zach. I think you're right. What it means is they know this year they're, I mean, you never know what, what could happen, right? The Texans last year are a great example of that, but the expectation is even though we're going to do our damnedest, we're going to compete, we're going to work hard and try, we're probably looking at 2025 as the emergence type season. And this year is going to be kind of a let's kind of uh, reestablish the culture. I mean, the culture got established last year, Zach, with, with Sean Payton, but now that there's so many of those leaders are gone. I mean, think about just the leadership dearth when you lose a Russ a Simmons, a Cushionberry, and a Jewel. Um, you know, there's going to be a little bit of a reset. And even if they hit on a quarterback in the draft this year, there will be growing pains. So let's, knowing that, just take it on the chin now. That way we have a better chance of being all the stronger in 2025. Yeah, I mean, show me leadership in the stat column. You can't. I mean, how many wins has a leadership translated to for the Broncos? And that's why I wasn't broken up about the Simmons release or Jewel being gone. But yeah, they're really, it, it was the correct decision to do it this way, but it really was the only decision. They're not going to be overly competitive. Let's just get that expectation out right now in 2024. But like I said, they're going to be mostly free from the Russell Wilson disaster in 2025 with over a hundred million dollars in projected salary cap space let's say you hit on your rookie quarterback this year you're set up to compete as early as next season so we've been through eight going on nine years of non-playoffs what's one more to ensure chad that the broncos never go through this period again right i mean look 2011 was supposed to be a i hate to com continue comparing what's going on now to 2011 but it's really kind of the closest facsimile, um, and nobody really expected much in 2011. There was an air of excitement because John Elway was back in the organization, but they had 
just hired a new coach. Uh, quarterback uncertainty. Fans really wanted to see this Tebow guy because he had finished, you know, he was the first round pick the year prior and he had kind of finished in an impressive way as a rookie. You know, the, the interim head coach, Eric Studisville, at the time, let him start the season finale. And it was a gutsy, typical, like when Tebow would win game, it was like that, you know, came down to the wire. It was last game of the season. Fans were stoked, but John Fox comes in, bums everyone out and says, we're going with the guy we think gives us the best chance to win, Kyle Orton. And that season was just like this. But I'll tell you this, when the Broncos walked into the, the Miami Dolphins stadium, whatever that was, week six, week seven, I think they were two and four, if memory serves. Nobody in, in their wildest dreams, Zach, could have foreseen that they would end up as AFC champs and beating the defending AFC uh, champions in, in the playoffs. So my only point to that is we're sitting here in March, and yeah, you draft a rookie, or even if you don't, you go with Stidham. It's looking like it's going to be one of those kind of years, but you never know how those years can actually shake out. It's a win-win in my opinion, because for the last, pretty much since Peyton Manning retired, every year we were led to believe, Chad, the Broncos would be competitive. So this season, we, we really have no expectation. If they have a sucky year, we all expected that. If they have a good year, well, it's a, it's a pleasant surprise. This is a good point from Scott. The Texans, you know, talking about their emergence last year, had four top 15 draft picks in 22 and 23 combined, right? So four top 15 picks hitting the roster, which obviously helped quite a lot. Uh, Rock Chalk, what's going on, big dog? So good to see you. Much love and respect. Really appreciate the generous super. Says, I like how the Broncos have handled the offseason so far. They created much needed cap space and have been strategic in free agency by filling needs, but not overspending. Hopefully they find their QB in the draft. Denver Broncos for life, MHH for life. Yeah, that's what it's trending, and that's kind of what we've been you know, trying to, that's what we've been telling you to expect. I mean, there's all the rumors about Kirk Cousins. There was the rumors about uh, uh, Sam Darnold. Both those obviously put to bed. There were even persistent rumors. I don't know exactly why. I mean, if Mike Kliss was talking about it, then there's a reason, but Cl there was a reason he was talking about it. But even the Howell rumors put to rest with him landing in Seattle. So it's looking like Zach doesn't mean they won't go sign a quarterback. Exactly. Ripped eye. Howl's off the table now. Um, thank you for the super bud. It's it's no guarantee, Zach, that they won't sign another veteran kind of stopgap type quarterback to hedge just in case they don't. Just in case the draft and first round or whatever doesn't shake out ideally. But it's looking like all that focus and resource, Zach, is is really when it comes to the quarterback zeroed in and aimed on the draft. Yeah, we've dodged every bullet like the Matrix so far. And when I say we, I mean those who don't want the Broncos to replace one placeholder with another. Just roll with Stidham and draft your guy at 12 or wherever in the first round. I think we have a couple more bullets to dodge, one being Zach Wilson, who could be traded. And I would probably consider covering Croquet. Uh, and then the second would be Jimmy Garoppolo, though he does have a two-game suspension. Uh, but I figure, Chad, this is the way I see it. The longer the Broncos go without being active, and being more passive about quarterbacks says to me they really are banking on making a move in the draft, be it at 12 or maybe even moving up to the top 10. Yeah, indeed. And, uh, I mean, we have a lot more to get to in terms of I want to talk more about the draft, kind of how these moves this past week have pointed toward uh, the draft. I want to talk about the signings themselves and some of the departures. But first, guys, we got to uh, – we got to help you get your nutrition and health game on point because listen, as the older I get, um, the more seriously I've realized I got to take care of my health and my nutrition. That's where AG one comes into play. No matter what you do for a living, if you're like me and you're at a freaking desk at a, 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 at a keyboard all day long, or you're out in the field doing something with your hands, whatever it may be, it can become all too convenient to rely on that coffee and that caffeine. But it's not that great for your body, especially blood pressure. Look into it. And there's always the dreaded crash, right? But with AG1, I get the sustained energy. So I'm not reaching for that cup of coffee at 1 p.m., etc. With AG1, 
that that's in the books. I don't have to do that anymore. I've learned also how important it is to take care of your gut health. And AG1, I mean, it, taking care of your gut health, energy, uh, focus. It's a multivitamin all in one. You get a delicious smoothie. AG1 is next level. Yeah, absolutely. AG1 is the supplement I trust to support my whole body health and help me feel my best. If you want to take ownership of your health, it starts with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3K2 and five free AG1 travel packs when you first subscribe. Go to drinkag1.com slash huddle. That's drinkag1.com slash huddle. Check it out, Broncos country. Like I mentioned uh, on on Monday night, you know, the very first time I subscribed to AG1 back in the day, I think the first time I heard about AG1 was on a Joe Rogan podcast or something. I gave it a shot. They included that with my particular subscription, the the uh, vitamin D and the K and all that. I was blown away. And as soon as I started using, now this is not advice. This is not nutritional or, or health uh, advice or anything like that. But for me, as soon as I started also taking that vitamin D, man, like I would get sick maybe once a year, maybe once a year. So for what it's worth. All right, Zach, let's uh, let's turn back to um, the topics at hand. Uh, Taylor jumping in with the super. Thank you, my friend. So good to see you tonight. Says other players Denver should part ways with. Go Denver Broncos. Yeah, so we've been wondering Zach, what was going to happen with Cortland Sutton? Obviously, all the rumors. Then he goes and he takes, you know, the Broncos off his social media bios. Um, you're seeing different late established veterans and leaders drop and get released left and right. You can't help but wonder, is Sutton next? But according to the most recent reporting, it looks like, A, the Broncos, Zach, are not shopping Cortland Sutton. And the latest buzz is that he's going to stick around. And the same applies. You had this story for us. Defensive tackle DJ Jones, who we all thought was a fate accompli goner um, after a lackluster uh, second year as a Bronco. Yeah, I mean, the thing with Sutton is he has two non-guaranteed years left on his deal. He seems a little disgruntled, and they already shipped off Jerry Judy. If the Broncos can get a second for Cortland Sutton, I'm making that deal. But if you trade him away, I mean, the difference in the receiving core with and without Sutton is pretty staggering. You'd be left with Marvin Mims, Lil Jordan Humphrey, Brandon Johnson, Jalen Virgil. So you need some sort of one there, wide receiver one. That's why I would lean toward keeping Sutton because regardless of who's going to be quarterbacking, preferably a rookie, you want as many weapons around him as possible. The thing with DJ Jones, it is surprising because not only was he a release candidate, the 49ers, his former team, was interested in a reunion, either trading for him or picking him up as a cut. But the latest report that I wrote up was that they're likely to keep DJ Jones. I don't know on his current salary. He's an account over $12 million against the cap in 24. That's a lot to me for a two-down player. Um, but as of now, he's still on the roster, and he uh, is going to slide in alongside newly signed DT. Malcolm Roach. Indeed. So bolstered, things are, are looking up. The ronk in the house, uh, on the D-line that is. What's going on, big dog? So good to see you tonight. Thank you for the stars. Much love and respect. You know this. Uh, we have also um, across the pond, look at this. We got William James Baker jumping in saying morning. London calling. Anytime there's a The Clash reference in our chat, you're going to get some shine. You're going to get some love from yours truly so guys. Can we see uh, Williams being signed by the Broncos with his recent injury issues? Could we get him on a cheaper side? Good addition for a QB bill for three or four years and a middle linebacker to replace jewel go Broncos. Zach, what say you? I mean, I, I'm assuming you're talking about Mike Williams and you pretty much have a Mike Williams in Cortland Sutton. Not only that, he's going to want some sort of bag, which the Broncos are in no position of dealing. And um, he'd probably want to sign with the contender after winning nothing in uh, L.A. slash San Diego. With middle linebacker, Devin White went to the Eagles today for one year, 7.5. I would have cut that check if I was the Broncos, but it's obvious they want to put that or save that money and put that resource uh, toward the draft. I look for them to pick up a uh, off ball at some point in the, in the middle rounds. I mean, just for craps and giggles, I'm going to look at linebacker at inside linebacker uh, availability here. 
there I might be off on a couple of these. What about Devin Bush? Is that has he, he signed up? Okay. Kendricks, Levante David. Is he still out there? I I'm pretty sure. I would take him too. I would take him in a New York minute. I'm just Googling his name real quick to see. Uh, da, 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 da. Nope, he's re-signed. He's back. He's back wow. in Tampa. Um, so this is I'm going off spot rack here, some of these names, but uh Devin White, yeah, I would have I would have definitely for that kind of money given him a given him a shot. But what this screams to me is they're a lot higher on Drew Sanders than um you know, we maybe have realized during the season. And I say that only because, Zach, when you have two very good off-ball linebackers as your starters and they're both veterans and one's kind of your uh, one of your leaders on defense and the other one is like stacking tackles like nobody has ever seen, it's hard for that rookie to, to kind of get a foot in the door. The Broncos tried to find ways to use Sanders, especially more so down the stretch, and he started – somewhat making an impact but i think moving forward it's all about drew sanders who i'll remind everybody is technically the highest drafted inside linebacker if we're going to view him that way uh for the broncos since dj williams who was a first round pick you know 20 years ago but then you know you got uh jonas griffith coming back and that's nice depth but don't count on him being a guy yeah, I mean, I was wincing when you were talking about Sanders because the way they described him at the combine was more of an outside guy, an edge guy. And that's I, I don't like that they're doing that. Stick to one position, uh, preferably off ball. But if he is a hybrid, they need a true inside linebacker next to Singleton, preferably a guy that can run sideline to sideline and cover a tight end or a running back out of the backfield. I just I mean, you look at it like this, and I know I know that was that was kind of the the vibe from from what we were hearing at the combine, but you've got three. Uh, I mean, first of all, is Drew Sanders? Even if you said no, this is what you're going to be from now on. You're a rush linebacker. Boom, go. Is he the next Batman rush linebacker for the Broncos? No. You know, best case scenario is maybe after a couple of years, you know, he becomes a, a solid uh, Robin type of guy, and they already have three Robins, you know, locked and loaded on that depth chart. Whereas you've got one good starter at inside linebacker. I mean, we we were excited about Jonas Griffith uh, before he got hurt and, and really before he got, I mean, before the rise of Alex Singleton in Denver, which was also in part fueled by Griffith's injury. But still, let's not get ahead of ourselves in just like earmarking him as a bona fide, let's not even think about it, starter next to Alex Singleton. you got to have a plan for that. They haven't rushed out and signed a linebacker. So they're either thinking here, Zach, as far as if they had to play a game, you know, let's say May 1st, they're either thinking Drew Sanders, they're either thinking uh, Jonas Griffith or a rookie. And it's not going to be a rookie. It's one of those two guys. Yeah, we do see the Twitter comments. I think it was Charles Hartman who was talking about Shaq Leonard and saying he's still available, Darius Leonard, whatever his name is nowadays. And I'm not really interested. I think he's kind of washed. He was good at uh, one point, but fell off a cliff pretty quickly. And the Broncos already have a older, you know, less explosive inside linebacker in Singleton. They need some young blood there with some range. That would be uh, that'd be nice. Indeed. Um, all right, let me see what. Uh... Yeah, exactly. From Mr. Producer. Back surgery relative to Leonard. Bad news for football players. And, you know, being close with a lot of guys that are covering the Colts, seeing the frustration they had with just his whole health thing for the last couple of years and all that. Miss me. Miss me on. I mean, unless Zach, you wanted to he was willing to take like not much more than the vet minimum to come in and see what's what I'm just not like hanging any hopes on him. And I'm not definitely not opening up the checkbook, David young. what's up, bro? Uh, appreciate you he says evening. How much cap do we still have? Well, it's not exactly updated in perfect real time, but let me see what over the cap is saying uh, currently on the Denver Broncos cap space here. Uh, okay, they have the Broncos sitting at twenty six point eight million in cap space currently. You're gonna, depending on what they do with their six picks, if they end up trading up and have less picks or whatever, you're gonna have to budget somewhere between like eight and ten million for the draft. So something like draft class to sign the class, something like 
well, they're calling it effective cap space 22, so 23 million in effective cap space plus the draft. So you've got a, you still got some breathing room. But if we look at the Broncos, I just want to see if it if this is going to reflect um, the most recent re-signings because in case you missed it, the Broncos re-signed tight end Adam Troutman. They re-signed little Jordan Humphrey. Uh, of course, we know re-signed Will Lutz, the kicker. Uh, they restructured Tim Patrick. What am I missing here on the on the money spent? Brandon Jones, the safety. Um, what else am I missing? The Roach, the DT. Oh, yeah, that's right, Roach. So let's see if it will pull up for your boy here. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and kill that page. Here we go. So let me see. We've got Roach is on. Yeah, for so it's factored into the math here on over the cap, the Roach contract, and so is Jones, and so is – let me see. Where's Troutman? Just want to be – I'm not seeing Troutman. Let me see Humphrey. So, but either way, Zach, neither one of those guys were breaking the bank. So they're actually sitting okay, are the Broncos with the, relative to the cap, especially with where they were even right. seven days ago, you know? Yeah, they got cap compliant pretty quickly, which is the only reason I think that Cortland Sutton, Tim Patrick, and DJ Jones are still around. If they needed more money, they would be the next victims. But I don't see the Broncos, Chad, unless they have an extension for PS2 or something up their sleeve, I don't see them spending to the floor because they're going to roll over a good chunk of this cap to next year to mitigate more of the Russell Wilson contract and also give them some more spending money because they will be players. They had to sit on the sideline this year in free agency, but come next year, this time next year, they are going to be active. Uh, Sam jumping in again. Thank you, brother. So generous. He says, also, if the Broncos deem it necessary to trade up to like pick six through eight to get their QB, do you think they'll need to accumulate more draft capital to make that happen? Therefore, they would need to trade a Sutton, a Bowles, maybe others. Um, not necessarily. I mean, the biggest drawback right now, Zach, it, for such a such a possible trade up is they don't have a 22 or pardon me, 24 uh, second round pick. So that's the biggest fly in the ointment. But it's not a uh, you know, it's not a non starter relative to a trade up, especially getting to six or eight, like somewhere in there. You're not talking about giving up you know, a couple of twos, couple of ones, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, it would still be pricey, but it's not like trying to get into the top three, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah, I agree, Sam. If they make that move, they're going to need something, the equivalent of a second round pick. And I don't see Sutton's value being equivalent to a second or bowls for that matter. And also you have to factor the team that they're trading up with, do they need a Cortland Sutton? Do they need a Garrett Bowles? Otherwise, they're of no interest. So they can use the first this year, throw in the three if, if necessary, and then dig into their 2025 draft picks, of which they're all um, stocked up. It's kind of crazy that with Russ cleared off the books, Garrett Bowles is now the Broncos' highest paid, and Simmons, uh, Garrett Bowles is now the highest paid Bronco, followed by Cortland Sutton and DJ Jones. It's also interesting, Zach, that the three big free agent signings last year, Mike McGlinchey, the right tackle, left guard Ben Powers, and then defensive end Zach Allen, all three of them came to the table with the Broncos, restructured their deals to free up money. I'm not sure exactly off the top of my head how much was freed up as a result of Allen and Powers, but the move alone that McGlinchey made um, freed up $11 million in and of itself. So hats off to those guys for trying to help out. I mean – to them, probably no skin off their teeth the way it was restructured. They're not taking any less money. They're just, you know, deferring this, you know, void year here, et cetera, et cetera. George Payton should be uh, sending both of them a Christmas card because he handed them a crap ton of money, and Sean Payton for that matter, and neither of those players, Chad, for the most part last season, uh, were deserving of the, of the millions they got. I'm trying to see uh... – after we grab Phil here, there's an interesting comment uh, from Facebook user in uh, Melbourne that I want to get, but I can't see who the name is without jumping into the group. But first, Tucson Phil's in the house, and he gets our full attention. What's going on, Phil? Much love and respect. Thank you for the stars. He says, good evening, Chad, Zach, and Deacon Scott. Guys, any thoughts on Mike Purcell, uh, Sebastian, Joseph Day, Tart, hashtag Buckham, MHH for life, Broncos for life. Yeah, what do you think, Zach? 
I don't want Mike Purcell back. I think he's the ultimate replaceable Jag. So hopefully some other team signs him. He's still a free agent. Uh, Joseph Day came out before free agency and said the Broncos tried to sign me last year. I would have no problem joining them. But then they went out and signed uh, Sean Payton, old friend Malcolm Roach from New Orleans. So I would assume that takes him out of the Joseph Day sweepstakes, if there are any. And Tyre Tart, I'm pretty sure... He is visiting with or signed with the new team. I could be wrong on that, but I've heard no interest on the Broncos side in Tart. Let me double check it real fast on Tart for craps and giggles. He's he's made a few rounds. Bengals hosted him. That's right. Though. No news yet from what I'm seeing. Um, yeah, just that he's visiting the, with the Bengals. So he's. I think he's still out there. But if the Broncos again, going back to my little. You know, if they had to play May 1st, et cetera, starting D-line, DJ Jones, Zach Allen, and now probably Roach. Purcell, I think, you know, his time in Denver has probably come to an end. I don't know how he fell so out of favor, Zach, with the newer regime. Like, because I always thought he was a he was a more than solid starter. He had that foot injury right after he got paid. And, you know, a lot of people think he just never was the same guy after that. Uh but it wouldn't surprise me, Zach, to see him maybe follow Vic Fangio just because, you know, that's that, that was kind of his guy. Vic was – he was with Vic and San Fran. Vic helped him get paid in Denver. It makes sense. You know why he fell out of favor and why I was never a big fan of his in the first place? He has one season – since 2014, when he entered the NFL of playing in all 17 or 16 games, he's an injury prone, limited, mostly run stuffer. I mean, I know some Broncos fans are high on Mike Purcell. I've never been. He is easily replaceable. And I think the Broncos will do just that in the draft. All right, let me grab this. I'm sorry. I don't know who you are, your name. I can't figure it out um, in the group. So Facebook user, you got to give Facebook permission for us to show it on StreamYard. But either way, appreciate the comment. Uh, good morning from Melbourne. It's been a hot minute since I've had the chance to watch live. Well, welcome back. You know, Stoke. It's great to see us finally commit to a full-scale rebuild. <clears throat> Pardon. If our QB is off the board, round one, would you prefer best player available or add capital and, and more high-end talent, uh, multiple positions of need, state of being indeed? Yeah, bro, if you're down under, you're definitely living that, that hashtag state of being alive, my friend. Thank you. Uh, it's a good question. Uh, it really would depend on, on you know, knowing who the quarterback is that yeah. or quarterbacks that the Broncos are in love with. And I'm still wondering how much truth there was initially pre combine to the Broncos and Bo Nix. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It depends on how much the Broncos like the quarterbacks and which quarterbacks the Broncos like the most. Uh, it's it, I'm QB or bust at this point. The Broncos have to come away on day one with a rookie quarterback. So it's either JJ at 12 or move up to eight or whatever for him, or you slide back into the late teens, early twenties and take Bo Nix and add some extra draft picks. That's really all I see uh, the scenarios being for the Broncos. I wouldn't hate it, dude. <clears throat> you know, if you were, if, if your ideal quarterback is McCarthy, you're Sean Payton and your ideal guy is McCarthy and, you just can't quite get there, and he's gone before you're on the board. Trade back, stockpile a few extra picks for your rebuild, knowing you're probably still like if you're if you want to take Bo Nix, you you'll probably still be within as long as you're smart about how far you trade back, etc. Who your trade partner is, all that you could still possibly have your cake, uh, get your cake and eat it too, so to speak. Gary, legendary mythical figure, love you, big dog. Thank you for the super. Hope you're doing well. How's the weather down there? How's, how's the weather uh, in Arizona, my friend? It's good to see you tonight. Um, Zach, what are your thoughts on uh, what are your thoughts on this comment here from Lawrence? He says, I think they've been the Broncos have been trying to get a quarterback like a, a veteran. But with all that happened, it's more of a punishment to get signed here than a hell yeah. You know, let's be a Bronco. First of all, do you buy that the Broncos have really been in all these conversations they've been linked to? A, or is it just, oh, Broncos don't have a bona fide guy, so it makes sense to include them in the speculation on every free agent quarterback under the sun? And do you really think this has become like a less than ideal destination for prospective free agents? 
Yeah, lots to unpack here. I mean, number one, money talks, and the Broncos didn't want to come up to what Sam Darnold got from Minnesota, which was $10 million for one year. So it's obvious they have a, a certain line they won't cross. Um, number two, I do think the Broncos were in on some, but like the Kirk Cousins, Baker Mayfields, that was more of a media creation than a genuine interest on the Broncos side. And number three, I, I don't think it's that unattractive. Yeah, the Broncos aren't a premier franchise like they once were, but this quarterback could be one snap away from starting and playing under a coach like Sean Payton, who would give him, I think, a little more uh, leeway, at least in 2024. Indeed. Okay. Um I just think a big part of this is is that the Broncos, the perception and the reports and the rumors, I don't think the Broncos have been really trying to get Sam Darnold here. I think if they wanted to, they would have. I don't think they really were all that in the Kirk uh, Cousins sweepstakes, mainly financial reasons. But also, again, is it a rebuild or not? Because if it's a rebuild, you're not going out there and trying to spend tier one money on Kirk Cousins, yet another retread. As quality of a veteran as he is, Zach, I mean, if the Broncos signed him, of course, this is hindsight, knowing how things shook out with Russ, but if the Broncos signed him, he would easily be the best quarterback to come to Denver post Peyton Manning. But even then, that's not really saying all that much. The Broncos are in that situation where, you know, everyone expects them to, because they need a quarterback. No one really believes i mean thanks really cool of you adam troutman to say yeah we believe in Jarrett as our guy next year no one really believes that's plan a for sean payton and the broncos uh which is why you've, you've seen him get linked to a few of the different names out there but <clears throat> really zach it's about the draft and i think the farther we get into the new league year and the broncos aren't signing a quarterback the more it points to that I was going to say, even if they didn't come off the Russell Wilson disaster, I wouldn't want them to go after Kirk Cousins. I mean, again, I'll, I'll repeat my points. Going on 36 years old, one career playoff victory, and also coming off a torn Achilles. It's, it's time they find a guy who could potentially go toe-to-toe -to -toe with, or maybe even, I'm going to say it, vanquish Patrick Mahomes. Kirk Cousins, as much as I love him in the regular season, is not that guy. So the Broncos were smart to not be in those sweepstakes and to bypass another veteran. That's why I'm so glad, Chad, they've dodged all these bullets so far and we're almost home free until the draft. Almost. I'm glad to hear uh, it's sunny in, in Arizona, at least for Mike in Tucson, uh, because the Rockies, you know, we've been getting pounded over the last uh, couple of days with snow big time. Don't usually see that much snow uh, this far into March, but you know that's one of the exciting things about living in the Rockies is you never know. Okay, let me jump back in here and see some of the topics we maybe haven't touched on. Uh, I mean, Broncos country, don't take a quarterback if it's not the guy. If the guy's gone before us, so be it, fill other needs. Yeah, yeah. That kind of comes back. Thanks for being with us. That kind of comes back to Zach, you know, the idea of drafting a quarterback just for the sake of drafting a quarterback. I'm not saying that, but what I'm saying here, Zach, is, you know, you have to really exhaust every possibility of getting your guy once you've identified. Because look, not all quarterbacks, Zach, in a, in the Broncos' war room are going to be graded equally. You know, it's you, even if if. Uh, J.J. McCarthy of the plausible guys that you got a shot at, let's say, plausibly. You have him higher rated than, say, a Bo Nix or even a, a Michael Penix. It's to degrees, right? How how big a difference is your grade on Nix or Penix relative to McCarthy? If it's a second-round pick, but you expect him to go in the first five picks and you're not going on the clock again until the third round and you are at 12, but you could trade back, and uh, in the first round and maybe take a Knicks or a Penix late round one, you got to solve that quarterback thing. You got to give Broncos fans, you got to give Sean Payton something more to work with, frankly, than Jarrett Stidham. And I'm not saying so do so at the expense of everything else, but like exhaust every option, exhaust every possibility. And I don't care like if it is a little bit pricey, got to pay through the nose a little bit to move up and guarantee you get your guy. I'm okay with that if it is your guy. 
And I agree with what Dennis Woods is saying here. Sean Payton will do whatever it takes to get his guy. And, if, you know, I'm not saying don't draft a quarterback for the sake of drafting one, but I'm not not saying that either. And, you know, let's, let's preface this by repeating what Sean Payton said at the Combine about developing a quarterback that – no one can really do it like we can do. We do it pretty good around here. So Sean Payton's very confident. Sean Payton's very prideful. And Sean Payton's ego can fill a room. So I'll say this. There's maybe four quarterbacks in this draft class that I'm assuming Sean Payton feels like he can work with and, and mold and develop. Caleb Williams, Drake May, JJ, and Bo Nix. And there's a possibility or a probability at least one of those guys will fall to them at 12. And if one of those guys does... The last two, let's be realistic, they have to pull the trigger. No position is as important as quarterback. None. If they don't do it, they're they're going to be basically in this exact same position a year from now. Yeah. You know, barring some kind of, you know, miracle where, oh, it turns out um, Jarrett Stidham is more than what he's shown at any point as a Bronco and a pro in the NFL. That's just Expecting that to happen, you can't. You can't hang your hat on that if you want to really get the ball rolling on reshaping the future, doing the the rebuild the right way. No rebuild, Zach, is a true rebuild without a reset at quarterback and an investment in a first-round rookie quarterback. That's that's part of the equation. Rip Dye jumping in again. Thank you, big dog. $10 super chat. You to man. He says, how upset would you guys be if we trade back and hits Pratt? as the QB they draft. Look, it would depend on how things ahead of them shook out. Like if it seems like, hey, you know, what are you going to do? All the guys were gone then and they trade back. I think there may be better options for like post round one quarterbacks than Pratt. Like I would even be way more excited about, um, you know, packaging something from your third round pick, moving up into round two, get Spencer Rattler than I would you know, trading back and, uh, you know, taking Pratt in round three or whatever it may be. Rattler has a chance to be something. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, I mean, I would be pretty upset at this Riptide. This is not my ideal scenario. If you move back in the first round, again, there's a decent chance that Bo Nix is going to fall to you, and you just you can't bypass that position. You can't bypass the chance of what Nix could be under Sean Payton. So, yeah, this is uh, not Armageddon, not Doomsday Riptide, but pretty damn close to it. Most definitely. Thank you again, big dog. Uh, we also have here Mike Edel jumping in, a mythical, pivotal figure here at MHH. Love you, big dog. A bona fide super chat superstar. He says, hey, Chad, Zach, Scott, just wanted to say, hey, hey's for horses. I don't know if you knew that. I have a feeling Sean Payton is going to uh, pull some kind of rabbit out of his hat. It will be something surprising. Hashtag go MHH. Yeah, maybe. I mean, maybe surprising. I don't even care if it's not surprising. Like when you see a magician on stage and he's got the top hat, you know, upside down, and he reaches in, pulls out the rabbit. You're not necessarily surprised that he pulled a rabbit out of his hat, but he still pulled a rabbit out of his hat. So that's that's what I'm saying, Zach, is as long as that rabbit uh, is a first-round quarterback, I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be all right with that. As long as that rabbit can throw the ball, I'm okay with whatever that yeah. rabbit looks like. But, you know, I can definitely see, and I feel like there's momentum for Sean Payton to make a move. I don't see into the top three, not a move of that magnitude, but I could see a trade-up with the Giants maybe or the Falcons at eight, something to secure his guy. And that guy would probably be J.J. McCarthy. Yeah, I like what Scott says here. Michael Pratt is Brett Rippon. And yeah. Sean Payton had uh, all – you know, opportunity to keep Brett ripping around. Um, just because he's a, a two lane quarterback doesn't mean Sean Payton's going to love him. But Mike, yeah, we'll see what that rabbit, how it shakes out, big dog. Go ahead, Scott. Sorry. Some, you know, great minds, etc. Sam Bam, number three tonight, jumping in. Thank you, bro. What about Al Bundy? Uh, that's one of my favorites, dude. Like Al Bundy, like, hamming it up, exaggerating his old high school. What, what was it? What was it? Uh, oh, it starts with a P. What was the name of his high school? Scott, you should know this, dude. What was what was Al Bundy's high school? Polk. That's right. Polk High. Thank you. Uncle Rico. Hey, you think I could throw this football over the mountains? Shane Falco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keanu, of course. Uh, Jamarcus Russell. 
Uh, I'd take Uncle Rico before Jamarcus. Trust, Zach. I'm a little disappointed, Sam. No steaming Willie Beeman on this list. That's my <laughs> guy. That, that would be my choice at 12 if we can take any quarterback here of the fictional world. Great movie, man. Scott says, minus five points off your man card. Hey, at least I had P right, you know, on the on the high school. I remembered that at least. Love and, yeah, love love it. Uh, love that whole show. Uh, Tom, what's going on, big dog? So, guys, if it costs Patrick Sertan, to get your quarterback, so be it. The best quarterback, uh, car, pardon me, the best cornerback is not taking us to the playoffs, as we've seen exactly. Uh, you know, it's like Humpty Dumpty. All the king's horses, all the king's men couldn't put Humpty to get back together again, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, all the Von Millers, all the Demarcus Wares, the PS twos, the Simmonses. Without the guy under center, you're dead in the water. So, you do what you got to do to get that guy, Zach. Yeah, and fortunately, unless they're trading up into the top three, which I don't think they will, you can keep PS2 and still get your quarterback if you move up to six or eight or whatever. Uh, I don't think PS2 will be involved in a trade. Andrew Lampy, what's up, dude? Good to see you. He says, hope everyone had a wonderful day. Thanks for all you guys do. Thank you, my friend, and for the support. It means a lot to us. You know this. Really good to see you tonight, big dog. Uh, okay, I want to jump in here. Uh, yeah, Polkai, indeed. Uh, Keith saying, look, I'm all about Spencer Rattler. Great quarterback, I think, will be there at a value. You know, he went from Zach initially, like when, when draft season began, you know, so pre-Shrine, uh, pre-Senior Bowl, pre-Combine. When it began, he was kind of like, you know, mid-round guess type thing on where he'll end up getting drafted, but mid-rounds and beyond. Now I'm seeing him you know, project it as high as round two. What's your read on, on Spencer Rattler? It's a bad year for the Broncos not to have a second round pick. That is going to be a loaded round in the draft and the Broncos are going to miss out unless they do trade down and pick up that second. But uh, as a backup, as a fallback is like QB, what would it be like QB six or seven? I'm, I'd be okay with Rattler definitely over Pratt, but not over the McCarthy's and the Knicks and even the Penixes in this class. Yeah, I mean, just a refresher, after he burned out at, uh, flamed out, especially at Oklahoma, lands in South Carolina, um, 2022, 13 starts, 3,000 yards, 18 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. It's kind of like no one really all that stoked on it. He moved the needle a little bit more this past year, 3,200 yards, improved his completion percentage to the second best of his collegiate career too, by the way. Uh, and then 19 touchdowns to eight interceptions. You know, his career high in college, Zach Spencer Rattler, was year two at Oklahoma, 28 touchdowns to seven picks, and he just wasn't able to follow that up the next year with everything the way it shook out. But he's got a lot of those raw traits, man. Like, he's there's a lot there, but you still have to wonder and worry. And this is why he won't end up being in the first round. What's going on between those ears? Yeah, and it, he's just not as safe of a choice as a McCarthy, and I know I'm going to get get some flack for that, or a Knicks or a Penix. If they trade down or move up into the second, and that's their guy, they don't get a Q in round one, fine, but definitely, definitely not my plan A. <laughs> I'm loving some of the Alan Peg Bundy comments in the chat. Way to go. Way to go, Sam Bam. Uncle Rico. Uh, let's grab Glenn here. Zach and Chad, thoughts on trading back and taking Rattler if McCarthy's off the board. We could add talent in other positions. Those are my two preferred guys, Rattler and McCarthy. Um, again, I wouldn't hate it. State of being, thank you, bro. Appreciate you. I wouldn't hate Rattler. Like, if you did everything you could, your guys were gone, you know, you, no one was willing to deal for you to move up, et cetera, et cetera, and you end up finding a way to land a Spencer Rattler some, somewhere beyond round one. Like that's a that's a consolation prize. Um, I could I could live with it. Would be tough to swallow, but it's like all right. At least we have a guy to see what might. You know, he he'll probably sit for a few game for probably half the season behind Stidham. But when reality takes its course and you realize that this dude Stidham is not going to move the needle for you, we might as well see what this Rattler kid can do. At least there'd be something there, a possibility. I mean, there was that kid from a raw talent perspective. There's a lot to like, but. I really don't think it's going to come to that. You know, Zach, this isn't the Broncos sitting at 
even like pick 18, 19, 20. You know, they're a pick 12. They're within spitting distance of the top 10. I think they're going to find a way to make something happen there. Yeah, I mean, I'm a little higher on McCarthy than most. I'm a little lower on Rattler than most, so maybe I'm biased or wrong. But we have Phil coming in, so guys, and difference between Tannehill, Fields, or Stidham, no difference at all. I mean, I'm not a Fields guy. I've been on Twitter, you know, railing against the Broncos, making this move or having interest in Fields. A placeholder is a placeholder is a placeholder. A bridge is a bridge is a bridge. It doesn't matter who it is. The rookie quarterback is what matters. And he's saying, I'm okay with Rattler or Milton. Again, as plan, you know, E, F, G, maybe, but not plan A, B, C, Phil. Yeah, agreed. I also, on McCarthy, like, I I hate to be that guy where I'm, like, fully swayed by something a coach says, but, you know, Jim Harbaugh isn't prone to hype. You know, he's not a guy that typically is out there, like, when he speaks in the media. Look, if you're in his locker room, yeah, there's going to be a lot of hype there. You know, he's going to hype you up. He's that's part of his thing. But like when he speaks in the media, usually he, j- it's what it is. Like it, whatever he says, that's what he thinks. And for him to say that he thinks not only that McCarthy is the best quarterback in the class, but that he'll end up being the first quarterback taken. Right. That's what he said. Am I, am I misremembering that for my two and a half weeks gone? I don't think so. That made me go, well, wait a minute. Let me spend more time on this cat. And he's interesting. Like Riptide says, JJ is the only quarterback that's ready pre-snap in this draft. All the rest look at cards. Uh, looked at cards for four years. I mean, yeah, there's there's some there th- there, so to speak, as my dad would say, some there there. But like, how weird is this, Zach? Twenty twenty two at Michigan in fourteen starts, twenty seven hundred yards passing is all McCarthy had. Exactly twenty two touchdowns, five picks. Last year, national championship, of course, just under three thousand yards passing. Once again, twenty two touchdown passes and only four picks. Just that touchdown to uh, interception ratio is legit. And it's not like Michigan, Zach, didn't play anybody. Exactly. And he won a national title and people are knocking him for not doing enough in a, in a championship winning offense. Like I want a winner. And, yeah. and the other criticism is, oh, he's he's only 21. He, he's not ready yet. He has a lot to learn. It's not about his rookie season. This isn't about 2024. It's about 25, 26 and so on and so forth. And I think McCarthy has that ceiling if developed properly to be that guy for the next eight to 10 years. And that's why I'm pretty damn high on him more than other people in Broncos country. And if he worked out, let's say, you know, Sean Payton somehow manages to get him McCarthy and uh, gets developing him, he's 21, I mean, 22 in January next year, you've got him, you could have this cap for that gum near 20 years if he ends up being your guy. Like if he ends up being a franchise guy, he's young. But he's not young and inexperienced. That's a key here. He is young, but dude's been to the top of the college football mountain. And for what it's worth, you know, what was he? He was a three-year starter at Michigan. So three-year starter and been to the top of the mountain and a lot of the measurables that you're after, a lot of the uh, intangibles that you're after. There's a lot to like about J.J. McCarthy. Yeah, Sam Bam saying $5 super. Thank you so much, Sam. Your generosity is amazing each and every night. Six weeks to go into the first round of the draft. I always feel like the draft takes too long to get here. Don't worry, it will be here soon enough. And I want to tag on one point to what you were talking about with McCarthy, kind of putting a bow on it. Not only, I mean, he's young and he's, I guess, inexperienced, but he's not immature. Personality-wise, he comes off well wise beyond his years, and I think that's a, a, a drawing point for someone like Sean Payton. You want someone that you can grow with. You want someone that has a ceiling. He hasn't even come close to scratching. You don't want a, a floor guy, and you're not going to get that with McCarthy. This is a concern. I think it's a fair concern. A lot of people have this concern about J.J., and I think it's fair because you had a great college football head coach. You had an extremely talented uh, supporting cast around him on offense. Sonny's wanting to know, is J.J. McCarthy just a beneficiary of all that? Is he fool's goal? No. I mean, I agree with what Scott was saying in the private chat. It's not just, I mean, that he won and then he had experience. He can throw on the run. He's athletic. He has a strong arm. I mean, he checks a lot of boxes. Mature. He's a leader. I mean, at 21, he has all these boxes checked. So it's not just he played in the stack team. And 
I mean, again, I don't understand that criticism. He won a national title at 20 years old. He was the captain or, you know, the leader of that offense. He, he did play with some talent around him, but you have to be really good on some level, Chad, to conquer the college football mountaintop as he did at such a young age. Yeah, no doubt. Um, it's It wouldn't surprise me if, if Jim Harbaugh's prediction were to come true. Like, that would not fully shock me. Wouldn't surprise me if he ends up being drafted before even Drake May, uh, because we're talking about it's like like let me let me just read you something here, guys. That that Scott said in our private chat. We're not talking Ken Dorsey, Gino Toretta here, guys who won with great teams. McCarthy has a howitzer and is athletic enough to be a receiver in the NFL. All right, then you actually throw in you know his his football IQ his pre-snap stuff, as was mentioned earlier, all that stuff, it would not surprise me, Zach, if, you know, all these months-long predictions of one, two, three quarterbacks being Williams, uh, May, and Daniels ends up being broken up in one form or another or one order in, or another by J.J. And then in that case, just flip it. Instead of trading up for McCarthy, potentially trade up for Drake May. I'm sure Sean Payton would love to have him, you know, captaining his offense as well. Guys, we're at 51 minutes. We're about out of time. So if you have any burning topics, get them in the chat. Uh, I'm just doing a quick perusal before we dip on out of here and see if there's any interesting topics that we haven't spent some time on here tonight. Uh, it's been a fun conversation, man. <clears throat> 50 minutes flies by when you're hanging out with your friends and just talking about fun stuff. I love it. This is I look forward to this every single day. Um, I think we're, we're pretty good on the topics. I think we've covered pretty much everything. I'm not worried about this. The Denver Saints, I mean, just because uh, you, you've, you've brought in over this year, two, two off seasons now, a couple of two, three, four Saint, former Saint role players and a kicker. I wouldn't call it the Denver Saints. This, this can't be, for example, Zach, and I know this predates your time on the Broncos beat and whatnot, but this cannot be compared to even – anything close to the Denver Broncos, right? When you had, I mean, there was a two year window there where like every former Cleveland Browns first round pick top 10 pick ended up in Denver in the late Shanahan era. You can't even compare it. You're talking about a fringe starting caliber guy, fringe starting caliber guy. Now in Roach coming over, I mentioned Lutz, you got Humphrey, who ended up being definitely worth the price of admission that they were paying him to have him on the roster last year, bringing him back. Uh, who am I missing? Troutman. I mean, solid. Is he your ideal tight end one? No, but when your ideal guy can't stay healthy and stay on the field, he's pretty handy to have in a, in a pinch because he can do everything as a tight end. Maybe not great as a receiver, obviously, but he can do it all uh, plausibly. Washington, you know, special teams running back. Yeah, you're bringing in guys you're familiar with, but it's not like the Broncos, Zach, are overpaying former Saints players just for the sake of they were Saints players. Yeah, Will Lutz and Mike Burton, the fullback who just resigned, are also former yeah. Saints. But, you know, coach brings in players he's familiar with. You know, new story at 11. This happens all the time. I wouldn't call them the Denver Saints. We have Mike Edel, $2 Super, saying, Stink likes JJ. Go Broncos. Love the show. Thank you, Mike. He might like McCarthy. But Stink does not like JJ and Jerry, as in Jerry Judy. Hmm. Boy, did he go off on him. And I'll say one thing I'm not the biggest Stink guy, but in this instance, he is dead on accurate. Indeed. Indeed. I, I, you know, and it's not just the fact that he contributed the way he contributed to the Broncos canon, you know, being on those Super Bowl teams. But I've always loved um, Mark Schlereth's analysis. And look, um, guys like us who, make a living talking on a microphone you know zach and i tried our hand at radio didn't like it uh i have but it did give me zach an, 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 a greater respect for the guys that that do radio that can discipline themselves to that pivot or not pivot what, what's the word i'm looking for the wedge the wedge thing where like i might not necessarily hate jj mccarthy but you love him and so i'm going to just like pretend like i hate him just for the sake of you know, conversation. I hated that contrived fake thing about radio, but when Schlereth speaks, he basically tells it like it is. And Zach, occasionally, maybe they lean a little too much into some of the tricks of the trade relative to compelling, you know, making compelling radio. But 
I love Stink, dude. He's he's dope. Yeah, I mean, I, I I agree. I think more often than not with him, I think he can be a little too hot takey at times, but maybe that's the pod calling the kettle black. Um, but he again, he's dead on accurate about Jerry Judy. I am so happy he's gone, Chad. Indeed. Yep, that's uh another turn in the page thing, and for for the better, I think. But guys, uh, this has been fun. We got a couple messages for you, then we're gonna dip, so don't leave quite yet. Once again, another tremendous installment of the Mile High Huddle podcast. If you're not doing so, please follow us on Twitter at the MHH pod. You can follow the main account on Twitter at Mile High Huddle. Chad at Chad and Jensen, myself at Kelberman NFL, and Scott, our producer at Scout Kennedy. If you guys want some MHH merch, you know where to find it, where to look, MHHmerch.com. Get you some. If you haven't, please drop us a like at Facebook.com slash Mile High Huddle pod. You can also find us on Instagram at mile underscore high underscore huddle. And if you haven't done so, you get your podcast on Apple Podcasts, make sure you're leaving your football pre a five-star review for a chance to win some of that merch each and every single month. But if anything, y'all, please do these three things for us. Would you subscribe, like, and share this video and every video you see on the MHH channel? It really helps us grow and reach more Broncos fans just like you. Much love and respect to all the great Super Chat superstars and supporters throwing down tonight, helping us keep the lights on. Love you, Sam Bam, Rip Die, Taylor, The Ronk, William James Baker across the pond, David Yunkin, the GLP, you know who it is, Gary Leeds Palmer, uh, Dennis Woods, Mike Edel, Tom Lackhoff, Andrew Lampy, Phil McLaughlin. Love you guys. Thank you so much. If I miss somebody, forgive me. Uh, but we'll be back, Zach and I, Sunday evening. Looking forward to that. Uh, remember, no more Legends of Mile High Friday mornings, but you got some Dove Valley Deep Divers tomorrow night, followed by Orange and Blue View with Dylan and Ron. It's going to be dope. Have a great weekend, guys. We'll see what happens you know, with the Broncos between now and Sunday, but Zach and I will be looking forward to breaking it all down um, when we see you again then. Hopefully we're not breaking down the arrival of Zach Wilson or Jimmy Garoppolo, but regardless, we will see you Sunday night. Take care, and as always, go Broncos.